Ah, whoever they are. Well, let's talk now to Adam Hutter, who joins me from New York. He's the founder and principal auctioneer of Hutter Auction Galleries. Adam, a very good evening to you. Now, to the vast majority of people following this story today, this is an astonishing sum. But I wonder, as someone who works in the industries, whether you were at all surprised by this. Uh, I was very surprised as well with the, uh, with the aggressive bidding uh, of the winning bidder especially. Um, it's a great item and it's the rare and unusualness of it that made it bring a record price. Uh, the fact that there are so few of his paintings in existence, is that what you mean? Exactly. What it is is that you don't see something like this coming up for auction uh, for years, even decades. And the fact that uh, it came up, you know, at this time, put in a sale of contemporary works to give it an extra uh, diamond in the rough type attitude was really the attraction to it. Yeah, and I mean, that is interesting, isn't it? Because it, it was not, as you say, in the, in the auction for paintings of that period. It was with contemporary work. Now, is that because that is where the, the mega bucks are today? <laughs> a little bit of that, but also just to give it a standout uh, quality to it amongst the other things that were being sold. It was a great marketing gimmick, uh, if you want to call it a gimmick, great marketing ploy by Christie's to do something like that, to give it that air of uh, this is our special item, separate and apart from all the other things that are going up for auction tonight, which is their highlight auction of the season as it is. And so the big question who do you think might have bought this? Who has more than £340 for this? <laughs> was it you? <laughs> Who has the pocket chains for something like that? <laughs> uh, it was not me and it was not a friend of mine. But <laughs> the interesting thing when it comes to auctions like this is that whoever it was on the phone with Alex, and by the way, you see uh, Pilkinen did a fantastic job auctioning. He was absolutely professional and a little bit of comedic relief put in there. He did a great job. But the person who bought it probably knows who the underbidder was as well and the underbidders uh, because it's a very, very small club to the people who can't afford something like this. And, and, and whoever that person is then, do, uh, I mean, does it, does it hang on the, the wall of their lounge like anything else? I mean, what does one do with something so extraordinarily valuable? Because we think of something this valuable being in a museum or some form of institution. Well, what hopefully might happen is that whoever bought it uh, will donate it or, or, excuse me, loan it to a museum for public exhibition because when it was marketed by Christie's and going all over the, over the world, Hong Kong, San Francisco, New York, the people were lining up like crazy to take a glimpse of it and take their cameras out and take pictures of it. Um, so hopefully the buyer will do that. But part of buying something like this at auction is a little bit of ego. I mean, when you're talking about the price range that we're looking at, uh, you know, you can boast around with your chest, you know, held high, I'm the one who bought it, and that will go down in history. <laughs> yeah, but I wonder how much it costs to insure it then. <laughs> oh, that's true. I would be willing to write an insurance appraisal on it should the party, you know, wish to <laughs> hire me for such services. <laughs> Do you do you think? I mean, is is this a sign? All joking aside, that the art the art market is is burgeoning for those high wealth individuals. Is it something that we are actually periodically going to see sums of money like this spent? Hard though that is to believe for most of us. It's an interesting thing because this is a Renaissance painting which is very, very different from the modern art market right now. The modern art market is strong, however there is so much information uh, that you can get online. The art market is very, very tough. The key is, is, as I said before, the unusual and the rare that comes up for auction. Things that haven't seen the auction market or any art market for quite a while. Um, where it's not something that you'd see in two or three sales a year. You haven't seen it for 10 years, for 20 years, for 30 years. Fresh to market is a very big key in any marketing uh, campaign that goes on for work such as this uh, or other items such as the Michel Basquiat that was sold right after uh, the Da Vinci. It was also fresh to the market, but because all the attention was on the Da Vinci, the Basquiat didn't sell, even though it was a very important work in it.
itself did absolutely fantastic and there were so many fresh to market items that it attracted a lot of attention to all that post-war and contemporary art as well. So the art market is strong uh, and the auctions provide that, provide that proof. It does spread around to art markets, to fairs, to shows that go all over the world to show that it is a strong market. Really, really interesting to talk to you. Thank you so much for joining us. That's Adam Hutter there in New York. Good to talk to you, Adam. Thank you very much. I'm sure if you find out who's bought it, you'll be straight back to let us know here. Thank you very much. I will let you know, Jane, right away. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Adam Hutter there from Hutter Auction Galleries in New York City. Uh, it is time to 